For this video, I'd like to talk about the idea of combining like terms. And I have these two examples here. So for this first one, we have 3x plus 5x. So essentially, we have three of these x's, and then we're adding five of these x's. So we can combine these two terms because they are like each other. They each have an x in it to make 8x. Now, you have to be very careful, though, because a lot of students, when they see 3x plus 5, try to combine this into something like 8 or 8x. This is one of the most common mistakes that students make when combining like terms. These are not equal because essentially these are two different things. You have three x's and then you're adding five to them, but we don't know what x is. x could be two, it could be seven, it could be minus 1010. We just don't know. So for right now, it's essentially a placeholder that could re represent anything. Now, if we knew a particular value for x, like x is equal to one, then this would simplify to eight. But until we know which value of x this is, we have to leave these as two separate terms. We, there is no way to combine these together. And you could think of it in a different way, where essentially it's like you have three apples and you're adding five oranges. I mean, maybe in one sense you have eight fruit, but we would keep those separate because you can't really combine apples and oranges together. They are two distinct separate things. So for the second example, we're going to essentially look at what's alike. So in other words, the terms with a in them, those are like terms. And then the terms with just a number in them, those are like terms as well. And we can combine the terms that are alike. So 2a plus 7a, we can rewrite that as 9a. And then you have minus 4 plus 2. Negative 4 plus 2 would be minus 2. So this expression here would simplify into 9a minus 2. So this idea of combining like terms is often very useful for simplifying equations or expressions. And before we jump into examples, there's one more type of problem that you want to consider. And that's if you have different powers of your variable. So let's say we have 3x squared plus 7x minus 2. And in this case, the x squared, the x, and the constant, these are all very distinct different things. Again, because we don't know what x is equal to. So you could think of this as like three bananas, seven oranges, and then take away two apples. You can't in any way really meaningfully combine those together. So we leave them all as separate. But if you had something like 4x squared minus 2x squared plus 7x minus 5x, now, these things are like terms, since you have four x squareds and you're taking away two x squareds. So this would be two x squared. And here you have seven x's and you're taking away five x's. So you would have two x left over. So as long as they have the same variable, in this case, the x squared term, then they can be combined together. So even something like four x squared y minus 3x squared y. Since they have the same variable term, you essentially have 4 of whatever this is, and then you're taking away 3 of that same thing, so you would just have one of them left over. So with that in mind, let's now look at some different example problems. So for this first one, we have n minus n plus negative 3 plus 3n plus 5. And what might be helpful is using underlines or some kind of lettering system to just distinguish which terms are alike. So we got the n terms, I'll use one underline, and I'll use two underlines for the number terms. So we have minus n plus 3n, or minus 1n plus 3n. So essentially we're taking 1n away from 3n, so we get 2n. And then we have minus 3 plus 5, or if we flipped it, we have 5 minus 3, which is just 2. So this just becomes 2n plus 2. And looking at this next one, so the k's will get one underline, and then the numbers get two underlines. Okay, there's only one k term, so we can just rewrite that as minus 2k. There's no way to combine these numbers with the k terms, because like I stated earlier, we don't know what k is. And here we have minus negative 5. When we're subtracting a negative, it's essentially saying do the opposite of subtraction, which is addition. So I like to put plus plus. 
So we have plus 5 plus 1, which is plus 6. So this simplifies to minus 2k plus 6. And we'll do a couple more like that. So for this one, we have 5k and minus 2k. And then we've got our constant term, which is separate. And when you're adding a negative, it's just the same thing as subtracting. So you have 5k minus 2k. And minus negative 1 would be the same as plus 1. 5k minus 2k is 3k, and then plus 1. And on to this one, we have our j terms, and we've got our constant term. So minus 5j plus a negative, like we said above, is the same as subtracting. So minus 5j minus 2j would be minus 7j. And then the 3 has nothing to combine with it, so we just have plus 3 on the outside.